<laughs> in this tutorial, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step breakdown of how I edited this event recap video for Lululemon so that you can edit better event recap videos for yourself. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography. And we're gonna start by breaking down this event recap video by looking at pre-production. So I always try to, when I'm doing an event recap or really making a recap of like anything, come up with like some sort of either written or visual list of what I want the video to look like when I'm done editing before I actually get to the event. So for this event, there was a whole bunch of things happening. I needed to include like spin classes, hit classes, yoga classes. There was a DJ, there was a bunch of like sponsored products and giveaways that had to get worked in there. There was a big run club that ran around the whole city that had to get included. There was singers, dancers, and the breakdancing team that is representing Team Canada at the Olympics right now was also there. So all that stuff had to be included into a 45 second video, which meant that this video was gonna move very fast. And so I came up with this rough like edit decision list, we'll call it, where I put the timestamp in the video that I wanted something to be included. And then I put the shot and any notes. I was gonna include framing, but as I was going through this, I realized that like, I don't actually know exactly what's gonna happen. Like there's a run of show, but even when you're given a run of show, of like when things are going to happen, the way that the event itself may look and the way that things actually take place on the day may vary a bit. What I did want to plan very well was the start of the event. So I knew that to bring somebody into this video at the start and keep them really engaged, I needed something fast. And I decided that the effects that I wanted to focus on for this video were match cuts and slow shutter. My first shot was going to be a match cut with a bunch of Lululemon logos right off the top, catch your interest, give you something that pops off your feed and let you know who this event is being run by and what it's all about. Then I wanted some hyperlapses and some slow shutter shots. So the first four seconds is just like a whirlwind being thrown at you and like it really catches your attention. Then we want like a slow-mo of a key person who's identified by Lululemon, like preferably one of their ambassadors, some branding stuff, and then we're getting in to classes. So showcase the spin class, showcase some yoga, get a close up of another key ambassador, then get into the hit classes, do the same thing and then showcase some branding, the runners, break dancing, and plus a general action sequence, you know, like the singer and the different dancers who are around and all that, work in the DJ while everyone's like dancing and having fun and the singer's going, and then some sort of like wide shot that like kind of shows the sun in his golden hour-esque. It was kind of a loose plan, but it gave me like some sort of motivation, like idea for my shots as I was going about the day. Let's get into this video now and actually look at what the final result of this video looked like versus my pre-production and kind of like my, my thought process as I'm going through and editing something like this in an unscripted environment in real time. And now looking at this timeline, I've laid the finished export over top of the actual edit just so we can scrub through this timeline more easily. Like I said, we have our match cuts and then a hyperlapse. And then we're into a hero shot that shows off that this is a Team Canada event. Here's a Lululemon Olympic Team Canada hat. And it's like this hero shot with like all this smoke and things around it. So let's break this down a little bit more because this intro, like first couple seconds here is the part of the video that I put the most time into. And now I talked about this match cut logo shot in a different video that I broke down as well. I'm gonna maybe cross reference a lot of other videos. to so kind of go over it again. I took a bunch of different shots if we go into our subsequence here of the Lululemon logo and if I click R to bring up my rulers and then command and semicolon, you can see that I have grid lines here and created a frame where I can put the Lululemon logo in. So as we go through, I've scaled logos up and down to fit into that frame. And then they all match cut together quite seamlessly. I did have to use some different effects like this one. This Lululemon logo was actually, if I turn all of the effects off very warped because it was on one of those like inflatable tubes. So it was actually like a curved logo and I had to use a lens distortion effect to make it look more like a normal circle. I put these into a subsequence and then I just scaled it up in my actual recap so that there was no black area. And you can see that they all kind of hit on the same place. And then the last Lululemon logo is actually a logo that fits with all the other ones as a match cut but is the first frame of a hyperlapse. So you match cut into seven different logos 
And then the last logo is a hyperlapse. And then I have a VR light leaks effect, which is a really cool and versatile effect that you can use in Premiere Pro to create your own like custom colored light leaks along with a glow effect to give me like a flash of color transition into our first shot, which kind of has smoke of a similar color. I should get rid of these, which kind of has smoke of a similar color in the background. So that, I thought that was a pretty nice transition. And now if you're wondering how to do this hyperlapse effect, I did this actually with a series of photos and this isn't gonna be a hyperlapse tutorial or anything, but essentially I took my Sony a7 IV, which is my hybrid camera that I use for both photo and video, whereas the rest of this video was filmed on my FX3 and FX30, which are video specific cameras, and essentially held it in the same spot, usually right up to my chest so that the camera's stable. Take one photo, take one step either towards or away from my subject, and then take another photo keeping my subject, which in this case was this logo in the exact same place in the frame. So what this looks like in practice, if I show you the full hyperlapse, is this. I'm taking a photo as I get closer to my subject and keeping the subject in the frame the whole time. And then I just made sure I got up nice and close because this kind of gave me a good abstract background to do like a little transition, which is exactly what I did. On my timeline, I've just reversed it and then showed it going forward and then flashed into my edit. Now this sequence here, I'm just showing like a couple key moments that the brand wanted featured in this video. So we have hero shot of a person wearing one of the Lululemon Team Canada hats with a bunch of smoke in the background. This is the singer that appeared at the event. And also the song that I've got going says the word you as she points at you, the viewer, which I thought was like kind of a nice little edit. So, and then I specifically received a request to show the Lululemon logo on the archway that they had welcoming you into the event with the CN Tower because this was being done outside in Toronto, right next to the CN Tower, which is pretty cool. So I got that shot in there. I kind of revealed that shot by pulling out from behind a white pole, which I thought was like a nice way to do it. So like kind of keep the continuity of motion working in this edit. The singer turns to her left frame right, I guess, if I'm looking at it. And then this action is moving to the right. So everything's moving in the same direction, which is a viewer kind of like keeps like the flow of the video moving better. You don't want someone moving your attention frame left sorry. And then the next shot going frame right, that can be pretty jarring. So I wanted to keep your attention moving in one direction. And then we have a shot of the actual event name, which this is the brand of the Lululemon summer series block party. So there's that for you right off the top. And I made sure to work some people in as foreground elements to make it a bit more dynamic. And then we're getting to our first event, which was a hit class. So these are someone grabbing their shoes for biking. There's the instructor whose voice you can now hear. There's someone on their bike. And then here's the instructor actually speaking. And then we have essentially just a biking montage. There were two hit classes. So this is another instructor over here. And this was actually shot on a gimbal. So I had the a7 IV and I wasn't doing hyperlapses on a gimbal getting this type of shot. But let's go over this montage edit real quick and how I think about this. So we have the instructor in like a medium shot from a 45 degree angle. Then we want to cut in from the wide shot to a close up. And I've talked about this before, but I kind of like going in and out and in and out when I'm doing these types of edits. If that doesn't make sense, it will. So we're in like a medium shot where you can like clearly make out what this is. You can see the instructor's face. And then we're going to cut in to a tight shot, like just close up where I, one of the biker's bodies fills the entire frame. And then we're going to cut from one tight shot of a body to a tight shot of that athlete's foot. And then here I add a color overlay. So you can see I have this color overlay that kind of like emphasizes the intro and then another overlay to like give us a good snap on the outro and then some color overlays in the middle. And this, I'm gonna turn my proxies off, this will actually look half decent, is essentially just showing us the same shot, but with a slow shutter. So I just basically cranked my f-stop and slowed my shutter down to get the same exposure. But now I'm getting this person's foot biking really fast and very blurry, but because the bike isn't moving, the bike's motion blur is the same, non-existent, which gives me a good contrast cutting from this shot to this shot. You can see the difference in the motion blur. And I use a color overlay to signify when the motion blur bit started, which I think worked well as a little effect. 
And now we've done two tight shots, so we're gonna cut out to a wide shot. And I guess this isn't really a wide, but it's definitely wider. You can see most of the torso. There's really nice symmetry in this shot, in my opinion. Like it's a subject with a clear focus, dead center of the frame, Lululemon logo, and then another subject on either side of this person. So I really like the symmetry in the shot and think it works really well. And then we're gonna cut from this shot to a wider shot that shows off the Lululemon logo and everybody biking in the foreground. As much as I can, I like to try to work foreground elements into this because I think that adding elements in the foreground of your shot can just make it look so much more dynamic. And we haven't actually showed like a real action shot here in a minute. So here is like a really wide shot. This is just handheld me with my a7 IV and a 20 millimeter lens, like essentially like clenching really hard and walking with my camera low and pushing it up at a subject while they bike really, really hard. So there's a good action shot for us. This is from behind a subject and this is from in front of my subject. And I said I wanted to make hyperlapses a theme throughout this video. And I think it's important when you're gonna establish a theme for a video or like some effects that you use them consistently throughout the video. So the effects that I'm using consistently throughout here are the slow shutter stuff and the hyperlapses. So here's a hyperlapse of the archway at the beginning of the event. Something to just add a little bit more branding to this. And then we zoom in to the Lululemon logo, like the circle here. And the logo opens up in a circle shape to reveal another circle. And because they're kind of the same shape, like it's a circle mask leading to another circle, I think it flows really smooth, kind of similar to a match cut. This was like a wheel that you could spin at the event to win a whole bunch of Lululemon prizes. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty jealous that I didn't get to like actually do this. Like obviously I was working the event, right? So like, I'm not gonna do this type of thing. But man, Lululemon's pants are so comfortable. And like, this isn't sponsored or anything, but I freaking love their joggers. I have so many pairs of them. So I was a little jealous, but no, this was a good work in. We wanted to make a clear point of including like the, all the giveaways that were happening at this event. So this is that. And now we're working into yoga and like obviously yoga has to be shown. Like this is a Lululemon event. They're known for yoga. So again, I've got a microphone, not actually on the instructor, but I put one of these Ceremonic mics, which Ceremonic actually sent to me, so shout out for them. I've been getting a ton of use out of them um, for this event. So I plugged like this bit, I guess it's a regular wireless lab kit. It's similar to like your DJI mics or your Rode mics or something like that. But I figured I'd get some use out of these. So I plugged this one into my camera and then I kept one of these labs on my camera so that I could put it wherever I needed to, or at least have it, the audio coming off the camera. And I kept another one of the labs here next to the speaker that the instructor's microphone was projecting out of. And I captured their audio like that since in real time, I didn't have time to actually mic up every single instructor who was coming through this event for the day. But it ended up working really well. I got some pretty clean audio off of that. So I was pretty happy with how that worked out. And this, this, this is like the same concept I was talking about earlier where we have a wider shot. And then we're going in to a dynamic action shot from a different angle. And from a wide shot, we're going to a tight shot. This was dog yoga. So actually funny story about this dog. They were just like barking at me every single time I walked past and ruining so many shots. It was so funny, but also so annoying. But anyways, we're going we went from like an action shot here of a person doing yoga to a tight shot of a Lululemon water bottle back out to another wide shot. And again, I've got good background here. So clear subject in the front. And then we have a line of people leading in the back. We have the logo right here for branding and we have some nice fairy lights here giving me some nice bokeh. We have a subject here on the left side, like on the left third of the frame and then some negative space here. And the next shot, we kind of have the opposite where we have a subject on this third and then some negative space on this side. And then I go center framed and we cut to the end of the yoga session. Somebody just taking a deep breath while you can hear the instructor underneath saying, this has been such a blessing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not a yoga person, but this is like audio to finish off the yoga session. And here's the instructor finishing their session. And again, like I said, we're keeping consistent with effects here. So I have the same color overlay that I used previously for the slow shutter shot. And with a slow shutter effect, I'm pushing in on the DJ booth that has the logo on it. And I've stabilized this in After Effects using the stabilized motion effect which I've done multiple videos on it, but I'll link one up here for you. And then we snap into our DJ shot. So here's our DJ. Here's our hit instructor who is very energetic. So I grabbed some good audio off of him. I actually used his audio at the start, 
when he says welcome to the summer series block party that is his audio and then we have a hit sequence this is almost like the exact same type of editing where it's like we have a, a like a medium shot of action we have a color transition into the same shot but with a slow shutter which i've detailed already and then we have a tight shot this shot is just like trying to show off like their shoes and like get as many people in the frame as possible i actually stopped this down to f22 because i really liked the way that the light looked right off of here i thought that looked really cool Cutting from that shot to a tighter shot of somebody doing jumping jacks in their Lululemon top. Here, I'm just cutting from tight shot to tight shot to tight shot to show off the apparel that's being worn by the participants of this event. But I'm not doing it from the same angle. Like if it's not going to be a perfect match cut, then I want to make sure it definitely doesn't look like it might accidentally be one. You know what I mean? Because if you have like near match cuts happening, it can just look like you're doing bad match cuts and like making bad edit decisions. So if I'm not going to make a match cut, I want to be really decisive about making sure that I'm showing my close-ups from different angles and with different framing. So this is kind of like a medium shot and you can see the Lululemon top. But this one is from like a front shot at a 45 degree angle and again, full gear. And then this one is an even tighter, like this one I would call a close-up from straight on, again, fully in gear. And then here we have someone punching and... There was like they were doing like a whole punching sequence where everyone was punching a bunch of times so i figured great opportunity to get shots of a couple people doing this and then cut on action cutting on action is something i do all the time when i film sports and i figured that like this is close enough to sports that i'm just going to apply it here so we have this person throwing their left hand and as their right hand comes forward we have another person punching with their right hand which flows well in real time and then audio of all these people cheering so high five to show the workout's done and then the whole group cheering and like the screaming audio we got the cn tower in the back here like it's a nice group shot to kind of put a bow on this workout section now we have a couple of shots from sponsors quickly worked in so there was like a couple of drink sponsors i figured i would similar to cutting the actions of punching together cut the actions of grabbing a drink together so there's that and then we have some people who are holding up signs i said there was like a run club that was going around the city and finishing at this point and the brand wanted to make sure that that was worked in. So I got some signs of people cheering on the runners and then we're going to get the runners running in. And I treated this pretty much like how I treat a run out shot for a football game. Like it's, it's just a bunch of athletes running through a tunnel. So I waited on the side. I picked out a shot of them running in like this. My second shooter who was at the event, Neville, whose Instagram I'll put on the screen right now, went up top because he's taller than me and filmed a shot of them running in from a high angle. And I got this shot here. And then right when I saw somebody running in who I thought that I could trail behind, I just stepped in front of them or well, behind them rather and got a shot of them running in 120 frames per second. And I think the shot looks really good. Nice center frame, lots of color on both sides, lots of smoke. You can see the Canadian flag and the branding pretty well. So that looks pretty good in my opinion. This shot I really like. I think that it just looks so cinematic when you can backlight somebody and like this, opportunity here where all the runners ran in there was like the smoke and everyone was celebrating this was like the money shot portion of the event like i knew this is where i was going to get my best stuff it's kind of like when you're at a sports game they're doing player introductions you know you're going to get like a couple good shots out of there that you'll be able to use so i treated this the exact same way so just trying to backlight people and make people look good as much as i can here the lighting's kind of coming from the side it's like kind of backlit i think it looks pretty good still this is like a full backlight that i think looks really nice as the subject covers the sun and then passes through it again and then they had this big like lululemon team canada flag that they had ran with the entire time so close-up shot of that so again from a wide to a tight back out to a wide of the run club leader talking about and he said let's set this thing off i like the quote i just grabbed it i don't remember what they were really talking about and this is the team canada breakdancing people who came in this footage is actually so sick i would have like made a full edit just of this like breakdancing just looks so cool I wanted to get like a nice close-up shot of one of their dancers for sure. And I shot it at a Dutch angle because like they were turning sideways, but I thought how cool would it be if I shot the breakdancing at a Dutch angle? So it kind of looked like they were straight and the rest of the world was sideways. So I tried my best here to kind of like keep his arm as vertical as possible in this frame. How vertical did I get? That's pretty vertical. So his arm's like pretty vertical. And obviously you can see the bench is on like a huge slant, which I thought was a cool little optical illusion so i used that shot and then just one shot of them moving quickly like i wanted to shoot this 
in 24 frames per second with lots of motion blur so you can really like see the speed on these people and i wanted to make sure i framed the crowd in the back again this is also backlit with the sun coming in from right over here and i think that makes this shot look really good these were the carabana dancers that they brought out to the event because carabana was like a couple of weeks after this so we got a couple of shots of them again we're going one forward looking right at camera which was Shout out to her for just like looking at the camera and giving me a shot. Like these are performers, they know how to play to the camera. So when you're gonna give me a good shot like that and just make my life easier, then shout out to you, appreciate that. Colors look good in this. Like the outfits are obviously super vibrant, which looks really good on camera. And then another backlit shot. Again, this is the singer interacting with one of the people who was at the event. Another backlit shot. You can see I have a bit of a theme here. Again, a tight shot, a wide shot, a tighter shot that's in slow motion. And then I'm cutting back to my kind of hero moment that I talked about. So a good backlit shot with a bunch of smoke coming across the frame, something that doesn't have a real subject, but is still visually compelling and engaging. Add a bit of a Gaussian blur to it and throw the logo over top and we are good. So that's kind of like my formula for doing any event recap video. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I think when you watch it back as a whole, like it's fast and it's compelling and it hits all the right notes. And it's brand forward, but not so much that it like comes off as an ad in my opinion. Like I think that it still is a good cohesive piece. If you want to see me do like a more detailed breakdown of the shots that I got here, but like from a cinematography aspect, I guess I kind of did that in this video. But if you want me to go more into detail with it, let me know and I can definitely do that. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis. And I would love to have you around for that. If you have any questions about anything, again, you can just drop me down in the comments. I'm super down to chat down there. But yeah, that's going to be all for this one. So until next time, peace. Turn in your back and dance for me. What a blessing! I thank you, thank you, thank you. How was it? How's everyone doing today?